Let's create a new project. Visual Studio and a C-sharp project. I've created a namespace called student class. <coughs> Inside of that namespace I have a class by default it's called program. I'm going to collapse that so you can see that there's only one class inside of uh, this namespace right now. Expand that and inside of that I have my main method and I'm going to make some changes to that. First I'm going to get rid of this. I just want to have a class inside of my namespace. Now I can rename this, refactor or rename, and rename, and I'll call it uh, student. Okay. Apply the changes. Okay. And inside of here, I'm going to place some code. private a variable called ID number. It's an integer data type. The private means that it can only this ID number can only be seen from within this class. Can only be seen within this class. That's the scope of this ID number. Same thing with last name, same thing with grade point average. Um, <coughs> We have a constant, and a constant does not change its value uh, throughout the program. It's declared, and a value is assigned. And in this case, GPA, highest GPA and lowest GPA are assigned to these variables. Constants um, are usually all uppercase. That way you can readily identify them within your program and it's a uh, double data type. Public means it can be these values can be seen outside of the class. Okay so let's add one more thing to our program. I'm going to create a property. Property is something like a variable. I'm going to use the shortcut to do this. I'm going to type prop and hit the tab key twice. I'm going to make a property for each one of these variable names. Now each one of these variable names are private so they can't be seen without the uh, outside of the class so uh, a programmer using our code can't arbitrarily change these values. They're hidden from anyone who has access access to this class. However, what we can do is that we can control how these values are changed from the outside of this class. And this is a public property. Um, so the first one I'm going to do is uh, ID number and it, ID number is an integer so I'm going to leave that as integer and the only change I'm going to make is that instead of lowercase I'm going to start off with capital ID number. Okay. First I'm going to do this the long way. So when I do it this way, what it's saying is that whenever you're whenever you're working with ID number, that from the outside, from another class, what you can do is that you can get the ID number, whatever value that is, or you can set the ID number. So you can say what you want the ID number to be, or you can return, or you can get whatever that ID value is. So I'm going to do this for last name and grade point average. 
So last, the property for last name is, um, <clears throat> you notice the name of the property has the uppercase, the name of the variable has the lowercase, and <clears throat> I also made one for grade point average, same thing. This has uh, a capital letter for G for the grade point, this has the lowercase. So the compiler sees these as two completely different identifiers. But on this one, instead of, uh, I do return the value, you can return whatever the grade point average is, but if you want to set the value, what it does is it tests it before you can set it to see if it's um, between the lowest and highest grade point average. Um, and if it's not either one of those, then it's uh, set to the lowest GPA. Okay, so I'm done with this class. I'm going to collapse these down. And I'm going to collapse this class down. Class student. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class. Go to the end of this one, press the Enter key. And let's call this one class create student okay okay oh and by the way what I can do is that I don't I'm not using these right now I'm not using list or link or uh, threading so I can get rid of these. I'm going to replace this with using static system console and that will let us have a little shortcut when typing in our code. And now I'm going to go get some code. And I pasted some code in here. <coughs> what I'm going to do in this class is that I'm going to create a student object. So we have the student class that we've created up here. What we're going to do is create an object from that class. And here's how we do that. So student, and then whatever identifier we want to use for that. So we're going to say first, we're going to create the uh, identifier first for this and create an object out of this student class. Um, and here it says uh, block out of place in the computer's memory and go ahead and execute the student class constructor. Okay, so we're going to create a second object from this student class and uh, block out a part of the computer's memory to create this class and here again uh, initialize the constructor. Now, I don't think we put a constructor in the student class, uh, but whenever you make a class, no we didn't, uh, but whenever you create a class, you by default uh, create a constructor with it. And we can see what a constructor is later, but uh, that's what it's doing right here. Okay, so now that we've done that, what we can do is that we can say um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and take our first student and set their ID number, this property, to 123. Take the first student and initialize their last name to Anderson. Uh, take the first student and set their grade point to 3.5. By the way, what would happen if I set this? Oh, they're going to do that in the second one. Okay, and on the second student, we're going to do the, the same thing. We're initializing all those values with the second student. Uh, in reality, what we would be doing is pulling, uh, uh, in a real application, what we'd, would we'd, we would be pulling this information from a database, uh, the ID number and, uh, and the 
last name and first name and all the other information. We'd be pulling that from a database. Okay, so on the second student, we're setting the grade point average at 4.1. Now, if I were to go back up here to my student class and open that up again, I would see I would see that uh, if we were setting the grade point average for grade point, uh, we would and let me expand that again. So grade point average, so we're setting the grade point average at 4.1. When it goes through this if statement, this is uh, outside of the lowest and highest grade point average. You can't have a grade point average of 4.1. So it would reset it to the lowest GPA. Okay. And what I'm what I'm doing here is that uh, I'm running a method which I don't which I haven't created yet. Let me see if it will let me do that automatically. Click on here, and let me see if it will generate a method. Ah, yes. Okay. So it generated a method for me when I did that. Uh, and so private static void, very good, uh, student, and I can send either the first or now. What do I want to do in this? Well, I just want to display some information. Okay, so I'm going to, I've got a right line st statement in there. When it, whenever it calls these, and I don't want this to be first, how about if uh, in my example, I'm using STU for student. Um, <coughs> I've got a right line statement that is formatting this. So, and I'm displaying the student ID number, the student last name, and the grade point average. And I'm formatting that grade point average to one decimal place. Okay. Okay, and what else do I need? Uh, How do I end up with too many curly braces? Got one too many curly braces. Okay, so we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and run this. Um, I'm going to do debug, start without debugging. And when I run it, I get the wrong results. Okay. So I've got a problem in setting up my class student. Okay. I need to go fix this. Just a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm returning the ID number for grade point average. I should be returning the grade point average. And I should be testing this. Okay. Okay, let's see if that fixed it. Okay, that fixed it. Okay, so I have the ID number, which uh, if I can show you that. I'm going to need to collapse this back down again so I can fit this on the screen. Okay, so I set the um, I set the first student um, as the ID number is 123, their last name is Anderson, and their GPA is 3.5. Second student, I set their ID number is 789, and their last name is Daniels, and the grade point average was 4.1, but I had an if statement in there. And that if statement said if you're below or above the highest or lowest grade point average, set it back to zero. So that's what it did here. Okay. Okay, that's all for this example. I'm going to do file, save all. Save all. I do not want to do file, save as. 
I'm going to do file save all for now and I'm going to track this down in file explorer oh first I want to do debug oops I want to do debug start debugging so debug start debugging okay now I can all right okay that worked and I just happened to save mine in my Visual Studio 2017 projects folder and I call this one uh, student class and okay and what I can do is right click send to or if you're using 7-zip or whatever you're doing I'm going to compress that entire folder and I'm making sure that I didn't just compress one of these, uh, one of the file names or one of the one of the subfolders, because there's a bunch of folders in there. The entire project. So now that I've got that, and then I can rename that and upload that. Okay, that's all. I'm going to stop there.